welcome to the Culture Cast. I am your host, Chris Stashew, and I am joined once again in the infrequently frequent guest co host, Mr. Matt Campagna. Hey, Chris, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> oh my god. So I, I don't know what it is with you and me watching movies that are trash, but here we are once again. We are talking about the film that more than likely has made it so we're never going to see another Terminator film um, ever again, probably. Uh, would be, I think it would be a fair, I think it'd be a fair statement at this point. Uh, we are going to be talking about 2019's Terminator Dark Fate. Talk. Talk fast. Who first? My name is Sarah Connor. August 29, 1997. It was supposed to be Judgment Day. But I changed the future. Saved three billion lives. Enough of a resume for you? No. You may have changed the future. But you didn't change our fate. I know you're scared. But I'm here to protect you. never seen one like you before almost human i am human just enhanced why do you care what happens to her because i was her Sarah! i can see you're very upset i'm going to help you protect the girl nobody else is gonna die because of me You don't make it. Everybody dies. Expect a big pain, brother. The whole body's a weapon. Sorry. When this is all over, I am going to kill you. I understand. I'll be back. So, film is directed by Tim Miller. Yes, the Tim Miller who brought Deadpool to screens. And we'll have a talk about that um, at some point, I'm sure. Um, it is written by, I think, everyone in Hollywood. I think you might have a writing credit on it, Matt, at some point. And I think I did as well. <laughs> Um, Everybody does. Right? Uh, it stars Linda Hamilton, who was uh, dragged out of retirement to make the film. Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, also dragged out of retirement to make the film. Mackenzie Davis, who, who's fantastic and everything I've seen her in, which was Halt and Catch Fire and uh, that one episode of Black Mirror. Uh, Natalie mm -hmm. Reyes and Gabriel Luna, who I guess he played Ghost Rider. Yeah, yeah, he played Ghost Rider. He was good. I mean, in I, Ghost Rider, I, I, right? But no. not in this movie. Come on. <laughs> He's not, well, he's not given I mean, anything to do, right? You have to play the Terminator. Yeah. Uh, well, excuse me. Oh, Rev Nine, not a Terminator. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So, weird. so before we talk about the movie, um, I'm gonna just give, um, like, you give your little quick, like, non-spoiler thoughts. I'll give my non-spoiler thoughts. Don't go see this movie. Um, you probably haven't anyways, but it's not very good. What do you think? Non-spoiler, quick little aside, in case anyone hasn't seen it yet. I think it's the third best Terminator movie. Uh, well. I mean, that's, not say that's not saying much, uh, but it's, uh, it's a good, like, the first act of this movie is a seriously good time. The second act is not quite as good, and the third act, er, and possibly fourth act, uh, just kind of go off the rails, but, uh. Um, Why, don't they? Yeah, I had a, I, I 
I had such a good time watching this movie. Shocking. Um, so, <laughs> so let's talk spoilers. Um, the, the big spoiler that I think is pissing a lot of people off, uh, I would say it doesn't piss me off, but it's just like, a, eh, really? Um, yeah, so John Connor dies in the first five minutes of the movie. Uh, they do a de-aging thing with Linda Hamilton and Edward Furlong. Uh, which, uh, by the way, Hollywood, just a heads up, it is uh, really unsettling to watch because they look like characters in a video game. Uh, the un- well, it's funny because, I mean... Linda the Uncanny Hamilton, Valley is a uh, thing for a reason. But, but uh, the, thing about, the thing about the three de-aged characters we see there is that Edward Furlong is objectively terrible. I would say put him um, in order from worst to the worst of the worst. Well, th- the thing is, Edward Furlong is terrible because that's an actual human boy. And it doesn't work, but um, it sounds like him. When though. you have a term, but when you have a term, yeah, yeah, the the the, the sound alike was good. Yeah, but ultimately, when you have a Terminator robot man show up, you you can dip into the uncanny valley, and it's okay. I mean, in the first Terminator movie, we had a reasonable, a very badly aged um, animatronic Arnold Schwarzenegger that is not good. Wait, which one? Are the are we talking the all. original Terminator one. There's an animatronic Arnie, and it's terrible. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah. When he does Where the he's, eye surgery. Yep, yep, yep. You know the horror but, movie know. that was Terminator, the first one. Yeah, and then the thing about Linda Hamilton is she's the most convincing one there. And I actually, I was, I was in the first frame of it. I was trying to remember if this was um, harvested footage from T2 in those. Um, in those scenes that were in the alternate ending. Right. It was that good. Like, it was really good. Yeah, no, Linda Hamilton Hamilton looked okay. I mean, it's still... Mm -hmm. She looks okay when she's not moving, but as soon as she starts moving, it's... It's. A, I mean, it's not a person. It's. A, it may have been an actress whose Linda Hamilton's like body was. Yeah, I don't know. I was. I was impressed. Whatever. Whatever it was. The stunt woman was the body double, and the CGI was put on her face. Mm, cool. They did a similar thing with Edward Furlong, where it well, was also Moff Tarkin in Rogue One, right? Wasn't that the same right, thing? Right. But Edward yeah. Furlong looks like shit. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. It just. It looked. It looked like a different kid like it may as well have been a different kid but you know they were trying something there but yeah so john connor gets murdered the character that you would probably ah, i would be okay with it if it meant anything for the series but all it feels like is hey remember t2 that movie that objectively everyone loves because it's a good movie um yeah here let me just fucking shoot the main one of the two characters from that film that is like really well thought out. Well, three, I guess, but it's it just feels it feels a little cheap. You know what I mean? Well, I must say, out of the out of every movie since T two that used John Connor, this was the best one. Uh, Christian like, Bale screaming at the light Chris- guy is the best version of uh, John Connor. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Bale only thing of that. Frigging, Christian Bale was a disgrace. Um, Stahl was a was a whiny baby, and what they did in Genesis is unforgivable. Like they are all truly awful, uh, and this was the boldest, best choice. Kill him off. Let's talk about how T two actually accomplished its goal, and I find that interesting because if you look at most of the Terminator films, they have a tendency, with the exception of Salvation, because that's just the ugliest stepchild. The, with the exception of Salvation, each Terminator film... Oh, Salvation is the worst, objectively worst Terminator film ever made. I don't hate Salvation that much, because at least it did something different. Oh, but it did it so badly. I, yeah, I mean, no, 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 no. Like, I know that, but you and I... we, I mean, you know, you and I agree 90% of the time, maybe 85% yeah. of the time. I think we can both agree that... This movie is Star Wars Dark Fate. Like, it's Terminator The Force Awakens. It is just that. It's Terminator 2. Oh, yeah. Not Terminator. It's a total remix. It's a <laughs> remix of everything good but in the Terminator franchise, for the sure. The thing about Salvation was, it, and like all of the Terminator movies have been that. 3 was a remix. Genesis was a fucking nightmare, but it was also a remix. Like, there is, and am I missing one? Is there another one? No. 
No, there's there's Rise of the Machines, there's Salvation, there's Genesis, and right. there's Dark Fate. So Salvation is the only one that's, like, set in the future war, which, I mean, it's kind of like aping the Matrix in a way, but at the same time, I didn't think it was a good movie. I actually remember falling asleep in the theater watching it, but... Oh, you probably missed the parts that are so, 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 so bad that you would know it's the worst then. But at the same time, at least they didn't do back-in-time Terminators fighting each other to save the chosen one. Every well, single one thing, of them has done that. You can't deny about, that, right? The thing about T1 and T2 is that they have revised one another. The The idea with, with the first Terminator film is that a good guy and a bad guy were sent back. And then in T2, they retcon it into being two of them were sent back. And they didn't make then, it clear in the advertising for T2 that Arnold was a good guy. They didn't, like, let that out of the bag, best I can no, tell. because I went, cool. Which, well, it's, it's smart because your assumption is, I saw, the first the Termin- yeah, I saw the first Terminator movie, so Arnold must be the bad guy because he was the bad guy in the first one. And that mm-hmm. is a brilliant reveal in the film if you didn't know it. Yeah, um, yeah. <sighs> I mean, is it also, there's also some of this, like, big shoes to fill syndrome. Like, no movie can be as good as T1 and T2. It's like Alien and Aliens, right? No film in these series are ever going to be as good as those two films are. Never. They can't. It's just impossible. Well, I mean, the the brilliant thing about Alien, the Alien series, is that each film is a different kind of movie. And so you almost can't compare it because... The first Alien film is a shittier action film than the second Alien film. The first Alien film is a great horror film, and the second Alien film is a terrible horror film. Because it's not trying to be that, and it's a bold move to do that. And I think, you know, what Fincher did with the third one is an equally bold move. It's just not quite as appreciated because (laughs) it's also not gotten kind of boring. (laughs) Well, it's also not Fincher's movie from his account yeah i mean it was he had no power as a first time feature director so no one was listening to him but you know it's which is funny in 2019 way. to think about but yeah oh it's bonkers I, 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 I mean you you've kind of already we've kind of already gotten into you know because you mentioned it in your in your kind of quick take at the beginning um i would agree that the first act of this movie is interesting but Also, not only do you have the main character from the, I mean, people will make the case the first one's the best, people make the case the second one's the best in this franchise. Um, One of the most important characters of this trilogy franchise, up until this point, this is the first time John Connor has not mattered. Every other time it has been John Connor's important, John Connor's important, John Connor's important. This is the first time that they've deviated away from it. And they don't give a compelling group of characters to fill the shoes of the original characters. So they know that. So they have to throw the old characters in there. It's kind of like I The Force Awakens. Disagree. I highly disagree. No fucking, I think, <laughs> no I think fucking that, way you think those characters are compelling. What? No. Grace and Danny, I adored the Ugh. rapport between Grace and Danny. And when Linda Hamilton was thrown into it and you had this cool trifecta of Ugh. very different characters with very different histories and, you know, watching Grace and Sarah, like, posture each other, I thought it was really cool. Oh, I was no, 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 no. The character of Grace it. is fine. The character of Danny is a boring retread of John Connor and Tim Miller went as far as to say, I don't like the Chosen One idea of the Terminator series. Yeah, well, if you didn't like it and you wanted to kill John Connor because of it, you didn't want to tell that kind of story again. Mm, you, no, I think you're missing, you, I think you, you're missing you the failed greater... Because it's another Chosen bigger, One story, right? No, there's a bigger story at play than the Chosen One. The idea that is like the meta of this is that it doesn't matter, robots. You can pick one of these things that you think is the human you need to stamp out from the past to stop your eventual erasure, but the idea is there is always another human that will step up to fill those shoes. I like that yeah. a lot. I like that the humans will always... The humans always win, is essentially the the, the statement the Terminator franchise that Dark Fate is going with now is the robots can't win, period. They will always lose. Yeah. Which is awesome. It's a great idea. It isn't a a post-apocalypse. It's a dark ages. And that we will emerge from this no matter what. And taking out John Connor, you still lose robots. And, you know, the the events of of T2, 
the events of T2 are given so much reverence in this film because Skynet is destroyed. Cyberdyne Systems is destroyed. None of that future happened. Eh, but I mean, they do a little they do a little show and dance about Skynet. Oh, Skynet doesn't exist anymore, but they still sent robots back. Like, mm, fucking paradox. Time travel paradoxes. Oh, well, Just yeah. steer I into mean, that shit. Every, sure. every time traveling movie has to handle time in their own way. And- right. This film just doesn't address it at all. <laughs> this one just goes, hey, you know, Terminators were being sent back uh, and they were stuck in flux. And then they just showed up. Okay. I mean, sure. I mean, that's as good a that's as good an explanation as the one they use in Endgame, as far as I'm concerned. Time travel plots, man, I can't stand them because they're just they're just a nightmare. Because you can't give them any more have than like five minutes seen, of thought. Have you ever seen the short film I did? Uh, Bear McCreary did the music for it. Um, it's called Do Not Erase. D N E Do Not Erase. Okay, it's a time traveling movie that makes fun of the complete lack of like quantum cohesion and good science in time traveling movies and uses the the paradox and turns the paradox in on itself over and over and over in this infinite way and in it's sort of sending up the the uh, terrible holes that terminator franchises and even you know back to the future in its own way like all of these time traveling movies but it and, matters less uh, in a comedy, have a right? Hole in it somewhere. Well, you know, I it mean, like a comedy, a it doesn't matter, right? Because people are like, "Oh, it's just a funny movie." Like Back to the Future, I don't think anyone's like critically analyzing Back to the Future. But Terminator, like, yeah. wants to play hard with the rules because they've made a point of playing yeah. hard with the rules. Well, and that's the thing you you build a world with magic, and in this case, the magic is time travel. Uh, you need to then make all the challenges still be difficult when you have that magic. It's the same. It's the Harry Potter problem. It's the time turner issue where you don't get to make something that gets to be important in one movie. If you could use it to literally fix the world. They locked him back <laughs> up, Matt. They put him back in the vault <laughs> at the wizarding HQ. Cause I, I, I think that's actually the, that's the actual explanation, right? Is like, they're normally like l- locked in a vault somewhere. Like, why didn't Voldemort go after those then? Oh, wait, plot holes. Sorry, never mind. Yeah, yeah. And, and I agree with you. Terminator has Terminator suffers from what almost every film series suffers from, which is bad planning. You know, with the exception of most of the Marvel movies and all of the Lord of the Rings, these most of these movies are like figured out after the last one did okay something 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 source material something something made for housewives and nfl players because we didn't want to use fantasy ideas yeah that's just oh that's just game of thrones never mind well i mean (laughs) god game of thrones oh right right game of thrones everyone another another franchise ruined by the people behind the scenes i would say terminator got ruined because james cameron didn't go with the close-ended ending in Terminator 2. We wouldn't be having this conversation now. Honestly, I think that looking at what we have now with Terminator 1 and 2 and then 3, Salvation, Genesis, this movie, I would trade those three movies in to get, or four, I guess, shit, those four movies Mm. in to get a concrete end in T2 that they can't get out of. The thing about the concrete end that they can't get out of in T2 is that they respect it in Terminator Dark Fate. They completely respect that concrete ending. And that's why this idea that 20 years after the original Judgment Day, there's another one made by a different company. With Who a just name. also happened to make the same looking robots as opposed to like a, I don't know, like a chemical warfare to just kill the humans. It's well, the it's fact, just fucking. The it's, fact it's, that it's, they it's come a, in a different. The fact that they come in a different color is a nod to the fact that I. Guess they don't. They're the, the same color. Side. No, I, I think there's something brilliant to the idea that these uh, this inevitable AI decides that it needs a bipedal form to take out the bipeds. That makes sense. Ah, I can respect that. I just it's just it's dumb because they show the future tech in the future war parts of this movie, which. I don't understand why they had to show that. I don't think it added no. anything. Uh, but all of a sudden, as opposed to the original Terminator films, where it's like these people are huddled together in a fucking aqueduct somewhere, we're using dogs to sniff out Terminators in their presence. It's they're flying around in like f- giant 
future tech helos dropping people in. It's like, you do know that we do not think that humans are in any risk of going out of ex- or being extinct when they have the same kind of technology the robots have. Like, that's yeah. just not, that's not, like, not believable. Like, don't show it because well, it I, doesn't I do actually, anything. I actually liked that they didn't make everything about this movie into uh, an attempt to completely replicate the future that we had in T1 and T2. I appreciated that it was a full-on like aerial war, that whatever it is Danny wound up building as a resistance was was less of a guerrilla battle and more of a head-on attack. I thought that was cool. Again, I think that some of the divergences in that timeline are necessary to make it not seem like a desperate attempt to recapture the plots and elements of the first and second movie if you're going to remove the circumstances that make them. No, instead they just throw meaningless CGI fights in the last 45 minutes at you. Oh my god. Uh, I mean, that's the problem with these kinds of movies. It's like they they set up a semi-interesting... I mean, look... Honestly, if they had stuck the landing, no one would have cared that they killed John Connor. You you know that. I know that. Yeah. But they yeah, didn't absolutely. stick the landing. The story at the end is uh, Sarah Connor gets another John Connor-esque character to train. Like, fuck, no one yep. cares. Like, that was cool when it was the characters we were invested in from those movies. Now it's just, this is the end point? Is you killed off the character from the last movie just to replace him with another character, and now, by all accounts, we're not getting anything else from this trilogy because the movie made, like, no money. So... Yeah, it's it's had a pretty remarkably uh, low domestic and international uh, box office so far. It's astonishing how low. Genesis made a shitload of money in the Chinese markets, like, a lot of money in China. Well, I mean, it's interesting to notice that Terminator has made three times the money outside of the U S is what it made in the U S. So I don't think people care anymore. There's a pattern happening. I think, I think the issue is the people who care about these movies are your age, are my age. And we're separated by a couple years. So we're millennials. This is a franchise that we ostensibly grew up with. This is a, this is like in those, it's in kind of the revered franchises. It's like alien. It's like Blade, man, not Blade Runner, but it's like alien. It's like Terminator. Blade Blade Runner is a really good example. Blade Runner has a small devoted fan base and you cannot make a hundred million dollar movie or a two hundred million dollar movie and expect that small fan base to somehow pay you two hundred million dollars. Right. They like, know it's the a fan, niche market. The fan base for term yeah, the fan base for Terminator is a hundred and thirty million dollars. Supposedly, the so they think. It's. I mean, no. Well, the, the problem. The problem is they only made 130 mil, and they made the thing for 200 mil. The thing is, Genesis made 400 million dollars. So the the issue is, is the last movie was really propped up by overseas money, and this movie, I guess, isn't, and I don't know why. Yeah, it's fascinating that it uh, that it's not doing as well internationally so far. And Schwarzenegger is a big draw. Considering Dark Fate, Dark Fate had a higher budget, which is a massive mistake. When you know going into making Terminator Genesis that you might be stuck with a $30 million opening weekend and you go into Dark Fate knowing for sure that you're making a $30 million opening weekend, you are screwed if you think you can make it for 200 mil. Do they really think that bringing back Linda Hamilton was going to be that big of a financial boon for them? Like, really? I mean, it was the reason I wanted to see it because I've seen Arnold Schwarzenegger do this badly before I, I, he comes back for every one of these stupid movies and isn't this technically the come, first one he's back for after t3 no, and he was in t3 and well i guess he was in, i mean genesis and genesis and this are the only two that he's come back from for since t3 right no they they used his likeness but it wasn't um, him no but he was in some way involved well, in, in Salvation, he was like, uh, in Salvation, wasn't it like Anton Yelchin's character fights the T-800? Because Anton Yelchin yeah. is Kyle Reese, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I need so. to rewatch Salvation. Like, I feel like... And Helena Bonham Carter, I think, was Skynet. Oh, was very- right. Oh, and that was the thing with Salvation. The thing with Salvation was, you know what the original ending for Salvation was supposed to be, right? 
Yes, the, where John Connor is uh, the T. Well, he dies, the, and then Sam, well, and then, and then Sam Worthington puts Trent his skin on him. Yeah, yeah, that would have been way cooler. I, I mean, mean they, it seems like Terminator is more of a uh, franchise of shoulda, coulda, wouldas, didn't. Yeah, it really is. Right, like you should have had John Connor die in Salvation, and then his skin is put on the body of a Terminator. Like that would have been fucking insane. But nope, it's just mm-hmm. he sacrifices himself to save John Connor. Wasn't, like, okay. wasn't like Mick G the director of that movie? Back me up on this one, Mick G. Yeah, oh my that's God, a, that's like, what Christian Bale problem. says just, in that rant. And they made the same problem with Terminator Genesis. They had Alan Taylor direct it. That I, guy directs episodes of HBO movies of HBO shows where everything's already in place. You do not want that guy to show up and have a vision. Didn't he also direct uh, Thor Dark World? Case in fucking point. (laughs) That movie's better than everyone remembered. (laughs) I'm going to punch the next person that says that to me. Get the fuck out of here. That movie's awful. And you know it. It's terrible. It's a terrible movie. I'll tell you this much, though. Genesis, I like Genesis more than this movie. Did you? I like Genesis more because Genesis played like fast and loose with the time travel. And I was okay with that because they just didn't care. This movie seems to like want to have it both ways. And you either play like fast and loose or you play very straight down the line. And if they want to play fast and loose in Genesis, sure. Like this isn't even the Genesis timeline anymore. Genesis is its own timeline. No, no. Genesis yeah. like happened well, the anyways. Genesis, the thing about Genesis was that it had such a great first act. Oh, yeah. And then it immediately shit the bed as soon as the second act hit, and the third act is some of the worst... It's some of the worst filmmaking choices I've ever and seen. And they spoiled and the damn so movie it, in the trailer. Yeah. They oh spoiled my. that they John spoiled Connor was a teacher. Yeah. They spoiled the movie on the poster. That's right, because so uh, John Connor becomes a robot... He gets infected by, what, Matt Smith, right? Who's like a yeah. secret infiltrator Terminator. Yeah. They, I mean, not that that would have helped the movie make any more money. I mean, the movie was more profitable than this movie. But that movie is more Force Awakens, I guess. But this is still, like, Dark Fate's still pretty Force Awakens because it has, you know, the return of a character who now, if they made more of these movies, which they're not going to, more than likely... The one of the main characters from the original series can't come back because he's the last T eight hundred, you know. Mm-hmm. And they have the reintroduction of a a lead female character who hadn't been part of the series, and now she's back as a mentor character. Like, there's so many parallels. Well, yeah, and you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to bring any of the actual hero robot characters in, which is unfortunate because Gra- both Grace and Carl are gone now. Although, the thing about Carl is that he was one of many T-800s that were sent back, and theoretically, um, for tiny, whiny, weird reasons, if he knew where all of the T-800s were coming back, then it makes sense that Linda Hamilton would have wiped out all the other T-800s. But it's also possible that other T-800s arrived. And that he didn't know Car- about. Carl just got to it. Yeah, Carl just got to it. Got to him first. Which could be so, fun. So you've got a bunch of T-800s out in the world together. Sure. Yeah. But like, who cares? Like, but like that, yeah, that doesn't, the thing. They, like, they're, there's they're no stakes to of, that. Yeah. They're all just a bunch of Carls trying to figure out if they should have wives. Like, it, it's, it's a strange, very strange at that point. Yeah. At least the, in Terminator Genesis, you had um, Pops that'd be a character that was given a goal by Sarah Connor. And so the things he was working towards made sense. Pops was sent back by her from the future and he kills the original, the original, original, original Terminator from the first movie because they recreate the Brian Thompson, Mm -hmm. Bill Paxton scene, right? Laundry Mm -hmm. day, huh? Like, you know. Yeah. That's cool. Like that, that whole thing in Genesis, like you mentioned, that's the first act was so fucking cool. So cool. And that movie just goes off a cliff so fast after that act. Well, it just becomes, it becomes T3. It literally just turns into T3. Yeah. Because they go back in time and they go forward in time, but they're not so far forward in time that they're in the future war. They're in just like the distant future. Yeah. Yeah, Boy. whereas Terminator Dark Fate, I appreciated the fact that the whole thing took place now and lived in, it, you know, in T2, where they play with the Mexico border run back and forth, it was neat that that was what the Mexico border run was like in 91. And to play with what the Mexican border run is like in 2019 and to bring, like, ice into this, 
was, I thought, a pretty ballsy, interesting move because, you know, people, I guess, I guess if you're hardcore against female lead characters, you might also be hardcore against immigration. I don't know if they're assuming that they're going to keep one audience, uh, they're, they're going to keep one audience happy and not care that they're alienating another one. But I thought it was a very interesting choice to just essentially vilify American border control in this way, which, you know, as a country, I, I live in Canada. We have open borders, essentially. Unless you're coming to Canada to do business. I mean, yeah, that takes a little <laughs> bit of extra effort then. Yeah, yeah, you know, or you claim to be a writer when you're going through the Canadian border crossing and they look at you and ask you, is that a real job? Not that I've experienced that personally or anything. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> Fuck you, Canadian border crossing man, by the way. Um, yeah. I, will, I will point something out to you that that irks me just as much now as it will continue to irk me. And the and it's you know the issue is when we talk about alien and aliens, we talk about a strong female mm-hmm. lead. But in the movie, she's just the lead. They don't make a point to keep forcing it down our throats that she's female. In Terminator One and Two, same thing. In this movie, it's like, oh, you're. It's not my womb. That it's like, oh my god, fucking really. Uh, no, it's I just. Disagree it's with so. You about, but about hold on, but it's just and alien. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, a- aliens, a- alien, aliens, fine. But Terminator, they don't make, they don't force it down your throat that she's a woman. They're not saying, well, she's a woman. She doesn't know how to use a gun. Like the issue I have with Terminator Dark Fate in T two, they constantly they, they sexualize Sarah Connor against her will. Like they 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 do things to her because she is a female that would not be done to her if she's a male character. But my point is, in this movie, they're, like, beating us over the head with it, and it's like, you don't have to. No one, like, if you're offended by a female lead in a movie, first off, you're fucking, you're, well, also, first (laughs) off, you're a fucking idiot. If a a female lead in a movie offends you, um, you're fucking dumb. Like, get with the picture of being okay (laughs) with people that don't look like you or sound like you or have the same genital fucking nature makeup that you have being the lead of a movie. Like, first off, fuck yourself. Um, Secondly, I don't want to the movie has to, like, prove to us that they have women cast as the leads in the movie. That's fine. No one cares. It's great. Move on. There's three women on the poster and one guy and then one robot man. It's like that's not the big it's not that big of a deal in 2019. Marvel yeah. Captain Marvel opened this year like you're not doing anything no one else has already done. I promise yeah. Terminator like and you already did it in your own movies like fucking come on like it just seems a little bizarre to me is all I'm getting at. Yeah, it's a it's a weird choice to um it's a weird choice to think that that is in any way the uh, the the surprising change the the main thing really is that the the lead character of this film by the end is uh is an illegal immigrant <laughs> from Mexico that i think is the only like that's the only thing that it has up on Sigourney Weaver or Linda Hamilton in these, because, you know, when it's a white lady who's aging, uh, her aging is a thing that flies in the face of what Hollywood wants and what Hollywood insists on and what the horrible beauty standards require. But um, when it comes to having a Mexican female character be the one who doesn't just give birth to the Messiah, but is the Messiah, that's, um, that's asking a lot of an audience. In, in T1 and T2, it's about the grizzled war hero that is exactly what you expect the grizzled war hero to be. And it's interesting that in 2019, it's no longer about the middle-aged salt and pepper white man who's in charge of the resistance. It's about the middle-aged Mexican woman who brings everyone together. That's the, that's the interesting change to me. But I would again like to point out to you, um, <laughs> this is going to be such a, such a dickish thing to say. None of this matters. <laughs> like so, so disappointing that none of this matters. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, it's pathetic that they're given yet again, another opportunity. I mean, they've given, um, it's, to me, the Terminator franchise is like that one idiot who keeps touching the flame thinking it's not hot. How many times do you have to keep doing this until you realize that you have no fucking original ideas? Like, 
Well, you just and, and leave it be for that. a very long time. Give it to someone who's not James Cameron, because having James Cameron here didn't do anything. I'd like to point that out. It didn't. Maybe he was able to work his magic with Linda Hamilton, but him coming back did not ensure that this movie was a critical or financial or narrative uh, success. It it didn't. No, at all. I mean, Terminator Genesis had his blessing as well, and that didn't make a difference. But I think the biggest thing to take to, the biggest thing for Fox and Paramount and and Disney and everybody who's involved. Sir, in Disney thing. owns this now, so yeah. welcome to that. But the the biggest thing for these for these companies to consider is that this is a franchise that tops out at four hundred million dollars worldwide. You will never make more than four hundred million dollars worldwide on this film. And whether it's Salvation, whether it's T three, like none of these movies do better than that. T two was a crazy aberration in this series. You're going to make four hundred million dollars. So make a movie that you can afford to make four hundred million dollars on. And this is something that, my God, indie filmmakers know how to do this shit. The idea that that Disney and Fox can't figure out how to make a movie that is going in a series where they know how much money the series, these movies make and they go ahead and, and make it for twice the price of what they can actually afford. It's just terrible economics. Is Arnold a draw anymore? Like, he's not, not, I mean, nobody's, but he's not, but he's not, Brad Pitt was beaten by Downton Abbey, man. There's no, that's my, that's my point. Box office draw. That's my point. Arnold is look not. At, look uh, at Ge- yeah, look at Gemini Man. There no. was a time when Will Smith was like the only reliable guy you could put and that's in a movie, my, and now and, nobody. And that's my point, is Arnold is not a draw because the day of someone being a draw is gone. It's long gone. Yeah. And I would, Now the I, intellectual property is the draw. So right, and I would say... you know what the IP can bring in, like Marvel knows that when they make a Spider-Man movie, it's probably going to make about a billion dollars. Because right. so it's fucking Spider-Man. Exactly, That's it. Exactly. And so they know how much they can make that movie for. When they make a when they make a Guardians film, similarly, they know how much it's going to make when, pretty much. Uh, Matt, let's just, let's just go as far as to say when they make a movie. <laughs> when they make a movie, when Marvel makes a movie, it will make a lot of money. People will go see it because it's just it – is, it is a film franchise. It is a media conglomerate that has enthralled all people. Everyone they, is a fan of Marvel for the most that, part. But they know that an Ant-Man movie and an Avengers movie are going to pull in a different amount of money, and the budgets reflect that. And right. it's alarming that Terminator, where you've had five times where you've gotten to figure out what the pattern is, that the people at Fox were foolish enough to put more money into Dark Fate than was put into Genesis. And that's why you I stand by Salvation being such an interesting anomaly because it is the it, only it one... Less, it made less than all of them. Right, and it's it the made, only it one that... less than four. Right, and it actively did... It actively did the most different shit of any of these movies. It, like, it completely sub... Like, it completely rejected the comp- the the usual narrative that we get with these movies, which is Terminators go back in time, got to protect someone. That's a, a war movie, a future war movie, and that's so weird that 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 they did that once. It was it was I think all of the, are all these Terminator movies except for T three supposed to be the beginning of a new fucking trilogy too. They've tried three times, three separate trilogies, yeah. and they failed three times. Like what? I, I'm telling you, man, whoever is in charge over there, be it Gail Ann Hurd, be it whoever, they are just completely unable to comprehend why these movies are a failure because they keep doing the same thing over and over and thinking it's somehow going to be different. Well, I think to, to speak to your question about Salvation, because it didn't deliver what Terminator movies deliver, which is a big highway chase scene robots coming back in time to save a helpless person like that's the that's what an audience expects from a terminator film and they made terminator salvation for more money than any of these other ones and yet it made less money than any of the other ones so they realized let's i mean this movie's budget is pretty close to terminator salvation you know, Pretty not close, per, not per remember, inflation, obviously, but that's but... two thousand and nine dollars. Right. So sure, no, you know, that's fair. That's, that's fair. 
that's like a quarter that's closer to a quarter billion dollar budget now for a Mick G movie. Can we also talk about why David Goyer is still working in Hollywood? I don't know, man. David Why? Goyer he wrote the Goyer fucking movie. Suicide Squad movie. No, wait, that was David Ayer. Right. David Sorry. Ayer, yeah. 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 Why but is that guy still wrote, working in Hollywood? But he wrote the uh, he wrote the terrible Superman movie and like Goyer's written some shit. Absolutely. Do you know what the last movie that David Goyer wrote was? What? Batman versus Superman. Oh no, wait. Goyer was one of the people who wrote on Oh, shit. Did he write on Gemini Man? I know Benioff wrote on Gemini Man. Oh, no, no, no. One half, of, one half of the assholes who sunk Game of Thrones wrote on Gemini yeah, Man. Yeah, Benioff. Benioff, yeah. You just and don't I get mean, it. It was made for people that don't like fantasy. Obviously. Did you see that <laughs> interview with those two guys from Austin, the Austin event that they had? Oh, my God. Oh. I've, I've listened to a couple of the things they said at Austin, oh. and I'm very pleased that they've lost their Star Wars job. Uh, uh, according to Kathleen Kennedy, they're, the door is still open for them. You know what? Don't lie. <laughs> Don't lie to us, please, because nobody wants them back. I, and, and the people no. who do are delusional and should stay far away. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's and it and you know what? It's very similar. I could we can transpose talking about Game of Thrones to talking about Terminator. Because it feels like the people behind the scenes, James Cameron, Tim Miller, don't have any fucking clue what they're doing. Because Tim Miller is a competent in quotations director. The first Deadpool is great. He definitely didn't get fired from the second one. And James Cameron <sighs> You know, he's, your, the thing your mileage may vary on James Cameron is all I'm going to say. James Cameron makes the greatest, biggest movies on Earth, and he needs to direct those. When James Cameron is just, like, tossing you a story idea and putting his name on something as a producer, that means you wind up with Terminator Dark Fate. You wind up with Terminator Genesis. You wind up with movies that are not good. Because James Cameron is a complete maniac in all the best and worst ways where he will grab every detail by the balls and make it do exactly what he wants. But when he's producing it and giving you a story idea and then go fucking off to go make Avatar, he is not making Terminator Dark Fate into the movie it could have been. That's just the, that's just how time works. Like, the man is doing other things. And so uh, James Cameron basically did what Jay, basically did what George R. R. Martin did on, on Game of Thrones, which was... He's around for the part we love. And then as soon as Benioff and Weiss started to make up their own shit, you get Terminator Salvation. You get the weird shit that goes off on a tangent that isn't at all what the creator had in mind. And then, you know, it lands on Terminator Dark Fate because I guess it's something close to what James Cameron thought would be a good idea. But James Cameron needs to put the work in to make it great. And, you know, Tim Miller's not the guy to do that. And you know what they should do? I personally think, and I don't know where you fall on this, they should just leave this franchise be for a while. If it were me, I would say permanently. I think Dark Fate pushes the franchise into, um, like, irrevocable amounts of damage being done to the franchise. I mean, it gets close. I'm not sure it's... I'm not sure it's quite their, like, Game of Thrones level of, like, irreversible damage, but it gets pretty close. I think they should just either let this be for good, or, I know they won't because it's a fucking known IP, like, give it to someone who's going to do something that is, and I hate to say this, and you're going to roll your eyes, do something Joker-esque with it. Like, just do something that, no, like... No, man, no. Do something, like, I no one is going to expect. Make it something anything just don't do this again don't have arnold don't have sarah connor do something uh, uh just return to basics horror movie that ends up being a terminator movie do like split split worked split. because yeah. yeah do like oh and at the end it's revealed that this is a terminator movie and like that would be bonkers give mm -hmm. it to like annapurna or a24 give it to blumhouse for fuck's sake let them do something low budget low risk indie film with it and either brand it as Terminator or b jump up the hype for it and then brand it as Terminator, a la that Blair Witch reboot, or do it yeah. like Split and have it be Terminator at the end of the film and it's a reveal, but it's a satisfying reveal that the audience is like, holy shit, blew my fucking mind. But the movie has to be good for that to land anyways. But don't do this again because you've done it twice now 
and it hasn't worked either time. And technically, you've done well, it four this, times. They've done it three. They've done this three times, and it never worked. And yeah, arguably, Rise of the Machines is the fourth time where it didn't work. And I feel like oh, I, right I thought you were not including right Salvation because Rise of the Machines no, 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 is pretty no, no, much just all, okay. Because no, Rise of the Machines is pretty much just T2 remade. Yeah, like yeah, pretty much. T three is like the biggest offender of just being a T two reboot. Yeah, it's a it's a total shitty knockoff. But I think the the most important thing about what you said there is the budget. You need to make the a Terminator movie for a budget that will make it profitable. You need to fast and the furious this. You need to take a look at what your metrics tell you. Look at your analytics. Figure out where you're going to make money in what in what locations in what territories and make the movie that will succeed. It's ridiculous that they are somehow able to fail at this because four they times more they did it four yeah. fucking times and it did the same thing each time with lower and lower levels of success to the point now where we're going this movie may not even be profitable. Yeah, they make movies they make these Terminator movies for around 200 million dollars and they wind up making around 400 million dollars. And if that's not profitable enough for you, you need to make these things for cheaper. And like you said, this is not a movie that needs to be a uh, uh, gigantic, expensive, blown out the door. You could just make a quality film. And if you're going to make a quality film, people will enjoy it. And shit, why not go backwards into being a Terminator movie at the end? That'd be cool. Or And like, you could make it just a straightforward horror movie. Just make it horror. Return to Roots. Because, look, as much as I like T2, as much as I like Aliens, I still prefer Alien to Aliens, and I still prefer Terminator to T2. Because I think it's just a more interesting idea, and there's more stakes when it's lower, kind of, not low profile, but when it's, like, a lower budget, I guess? I don't know. Like, T2, I never at any point point feel like... that. a really good point. There's, yeah. there's no stakes when everything is a CGI Humvee being thrown around in the water. Like, and they think they some, really must think about... we're stupid. Like that, it feels like they think the audience is dumb. That this is going to be enough. Bunch of CGI bullshit flying around. Characters jumping at each other in midair. They think that the audience has been conditioned and trained enough by Marvel and everybody else that you're just going to show up because you want to see the next big CGI Bing Bang Boom Boom. Like that's. That is so naive and conceited of the of the studios to think that that's enough. It's not enough anymore. Look how much money your movie made. It didn't make that much money. This is not enough anymore. Step your fucking game up. Yeah, they're, and they think I think you're right when when you say they they they're acting like you need more CGI when really you need more stakes. You need to be more invested in the characters, and you need to believe that their fate is at stake and if you're not if, if if you don't believe the actor is in the shot if you don't believe the character is actually having this happen to them your brain checks out and there were a few times in this movie where my brain just checked out and you really are sort of you're not you're on the money when you say they need to do something that is uh, a low enough budget that we're not relying on an even bigger CGI mess than last time. You need to be relying on an even more important level of stakes. You need to be relying on on a connection between the audience and the character that makes them care. When but you Sarah just don't Connor get it, Matt. This chased, one has this one has two T one thousands because the guy separates himself into two versions of the robot. We just don't get it. That's cool. It's cool that in the last twenty five years they haven't been able to come up with a new antagonist for these movies outside of yet another puddle of goop that turns into a robot. Because on top of everything else, TX? that has you been like, you don't like Christiana Loken's T X. But that was another Terminator goop 3? Terminator, wasn't it? <laughs> It was a goop Terminator that could make energy weapons. Right, and then um, Terminator Genesis had John Connor, the goop monster, and then Salvation... Was basically nanite. Right, and then Salvation didn't have that. But this movie also has yet no, another Salvation goop Terminator. Salvation did have a different kind of Terminator because the character that uh, Avatar guy played oh, was right. a different kind of Terminator. It's like a right? human Terminator, a bit like right? Grace. Yeah, he was a bit like Grace in this one. I think her character's handled better, but... 
the, oh, the her character is handled beautifully because she's like a Absolutely. human. She's like she's yeah. like RoboCop kind of. Yeah, but yeah, yeah like RoboCop with a memory. It was good. But they haven't done anything other than these goop mimetic alloys. I think is what they call it. They haven't done mm-hmm. anything different since T two, and T two is the only time it's worked. So it's just it's well, like these just piles of laziness. Like let's trot Arnold out. Okay, let's trot the fucking goop monsters out. Let's trot now Linda Hamilton out. It's like the people are dumb enough that they're gonna show up. Oh, Sarah Connor. Remember how Amelia Clark was in Genesis? Yeah. Okay. Like, pfft, like God damn you people. Like, what the fuck well, is wrong? We're not stupid. That, consider the fact that James Cameron uses CGI for menace in the most beautiful, mind-bending, influential ways in T2 because he has a better sense of composing a frame and using the weapons of filmmaking to tell a story than Tim Miller does. And that's why rudimentary 1991 CGI is better than 2019 Dark Fate. It holds up so well because it's being used beautifully. And Robert and, Patrick is genuinely menacing. Everyone else has mm-hmm. tried to just do the Robert Patrick thing. No one has done their own thing. And look, I get it. They're robots. They're not programmed with personalities. Whatever. That's fine. But but the thing I loved about Robert Patrick was he was. Robert Patrick, when he would go around with that southern charm as that T-1000, it made it so much scarier than... uh an imposing Austrian robot man. Well, it was like, I think they described it as like the Terminator in the original was a Panzer tank and Robert Patrick was a Porsche. And that makes yeah. sense. But like, you have, you have really leaned on that crutch for four movies now. Like, mm-hmm. for fuck's sake, guys, come on. They tried to make Gabriel Luna into a Ferrari. <laughs> and, um,. It's just, it, at that point, it's an evolutionary step. And there was something revolutionary about the T-1000. And until yeah. someone figures out what the revolutionary idea is for a scarier Terminator, we're just, we're doomed to watch these things repeat themselves. I'd like to point out Arnold as the Terminator is horrifying because Arnold can walk in, grab you by your face, and crush your skull with his hand. That's his character. He is a fucking... Scary enough. Yeah, it's horrifying. He could just take your head. He's an unflinching, unnerving, unrepentant killing machine. That's what he's made for. He could walk in, grab your head, and squish it like a fucking watermelon. And that's horrifying enough. Like, why is that not scary? Like, you can't reason with it. You can't do anything. That's what Michael Bean says in the first film. And why is that not scary enough? No, it's got to be a guy who can jump off the walls and fucking squish squid like squid liquid through the front of the car and stand on the hood of the car like that's not scary like that's i mean just goofy. ultimately the reason it's not enough is because terminator one exists that movie already happened so we don't need i mean if we want that experience we just watch that one movie again but they keep trying to give us a new but similar experience and i think they're leaning too much on the similar right. because like why what, not just what, watch t2 yeah, and what what we saw James Cameron do from the first Alien when he got his hands on the second one is exactly what he did when he got his hands on the second of his own movie. And he made the biggest action film ever. And every time he makes the biggest action film ever, nobody can follow it up. Not even not even himself. And they literally they just try. Oh, it's not for lack of trying. They keep yeah. trying. And Fox owns the rights to all of it, which means Disney owns the rights to all of it now. <laughs> So good luck with Alien and good luck with Terminator. I'm curious because this is like like we're talking about franchise wise. I think there's a ton of parallels between Alien and Terminator. Sitting here, oh, 2019, yeah. in the last two years, we've had an Alien film and a Terminator film come out. In the if we're sitting here right now in end of the year end of the year stretch 2019, which franchise is in a better place? Alien or Terminator? I would say Terminator is in the better place because Terminator can still do Terminator versus RoboCop. If I get two of those movies, I will be a happy boy. I don't care how shitty they are because I've already seen Alien versus Predator. <laughs> I mean, they can still redo Alien versus Predator. There's nothing stopping. Yep. Well, and then you do Alien versus Predator again. You do RoboCop versus Terminator. Then you do RoboCop and Terminator versus Alien and Predator. Like, just give me all my 80s dreams, please. That's all the, I want. Just do the video games and comic books, please. Do the thing. Do, do the do Dark the Horse thing. thing. I mean, look, I would agree with you that Terminator is in a better place, but I'm going to agree with you for a different reason. 
I would agree with your reason. The other reason that Terminator is in a better place is Ridley Scott is terrible. <laughs> he is a terrible director in 2019, and he apparently is taking it upon himself to be the only one who can direct Alien movies. And um, he's awful now, and yep. he made his two best movies back-to-back, and that was Alien and Blade Runner, and no, I don't yep. like Gladiator, so stop fucking asking me, people, for fuck's sake. Um and Ridley Scott hasn't really done a whole lot since a value since Blade Runner and Alien. And those movies, if you make one of those movies in your career, you're a fucking genius. If you make both of yeah. them, you never have to make another goddamn movie for the rest of your life. But Terminator mm-hmm. doesn't have Ridley Scott attached who is taking it upon himself to, you know, like Ruin the scene it. from The Simpsons, continue to kick the kid when he's on the ground. Like, you don't have yeah. to keep doing it. Yeah, and I like that uh, that James Cameron is busy with his avatar films, which means Terminator could do anything from here on out. And I just hope it's something for a hundred million dollars or less. And I, I would be delighted to see Linda Hamilton back because she was exceptional in this. She doesn't and want to come I would back. Be, She's like said, she has no interest in redoing anything with Terminator because oh, of the amount of, because because of the amount of training that she had to get into to be in this movie. I mean, they asked a lot of her. Or her stunt double. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. And she was in excellent shape. I honestly think the best way to approach this is to just do a hard reboot. No no more John Connor. You're going to have to have a Terminator in some form or fashion. No John Connor. No Sarah Connor. No Arnold. No Grace. No Danny. No nothing. I just want a new set of characters that have nothing, no old characters show up, no old characters are name dropped, no recasting. I don't want any of that. I want something new, fresh, cheap that is back to basics of where it came from, that understands the roots of the franchise, but does something new and different that can set up something, an interesting direction to go in. If if the original series is a horror movie than an action movie, you know what you can do? Another horror movie, and then transition into an action movie again. And you can get away with it because because you probably can. I think anyone would give them a pass if they essentially did that, but didn't feel tethered to a storyline that has essentially pushed itself into a time-traveling corner because it totally has. Yeah, what I would do with this now is do um, essentially a spinoff where we now know what Skynet slash Legion does in North America. So show me what happens in Japan. Show me what the Japanese uprising against Skynet looks like. Show me who their savior is. Show me who, how they go back in time to stop, um, I don't know, the, the hero Connor from being born. I don't even I want time. See. I don't even want time travel. Like, oh no, you got to do the whole. You got to do the whole thing, but you got to do the whole thing somewhere else in the world. The reason we're in this situation that we're in right now with this franchise is because of time travel being used in the Doctor Who way that you already I mentioned. Disagree. I disagree. I think time travel needs to be used in a way that is consistent across the next three films they make, and they tried that with Genesis. They specifically wanted to make a new film series with the Terminator IP that would be uh, thought out from the very beginning. And unfortunately, the first one, they set it up and then it all fell apart because it didn't make enough money for a $200 million movie again. And I think if they could do this for $100 million and they do one somewhere else in the world, Australia, Japan, show us what another part of the world does when a Terminator comes back in time to stop someone and then also show us what the future of Australia looks like, show us what the future of Japan looks like and just do it differently. No one's going to expect any of these actors to come back then. You can do it for a hundred million dollars. In your mind, similar to the alien Terminator question, was Genesis or this movie a better leaping off point for another trilogy? Because I honest to God think Genesis was a better jumping off point. I don't see Dark Fate as a jumping off point. But that's what they wanted it it to be. I mean, admittedly so. I just see it as a mulligan on Terminator 3. So I'd say Genesis is the better um, launch of a trilogy because I felt like I wanted to know what happened next. You know, they turned Arnie into a T-1000 at the end of that one. I was interested. And that's it. And you genuinely have characters that you know and love in situations that 
are completely new. Yep, yep. And I thought that was an interesting spot. Um, unfortunately, Alan Taylor did a terrible job on that film, and the parts that he was ripping off aesthetically from James Cameron looked cool, and every other part of it looked like a mid-budget cable television show. Well, they also cast and, Jai Courtney, which doesn't help. Yeah, that was a terrible choice. This franchise has had two nondescript white guys in lead roles, Sam Worthington, who's awful, and... Yeah. Uh, well, so actually, I gotta take that back. Sam Worthington wasn't great, but if you watch that um, that miniseries that was like uh, the catching of the Unabomber, that he was good in that show. So maybe oh, it's really? just maybe it's just the writing. I don't know. Sam Worthington, I think, has more of a ceiling than Jai Courtney. I don't care what anyone says. Jai Courtney was terrible in Suicide Squad. That movie's terrible, and he is boring. I find him pretty boring. Yeah, yeah. It's generic bald and white he, guy. He's also he's also always in some blockbuster where he has to throw the line away and act badly. I'd love to see him in, and maybe he's in something and I haven't seen it yet, but I'd love to see him just show what he can do as opposed to the restrictions he's being handed by, you know, some sad modern sense of what acting real is. Being part of massive franchise sequels, like, you know how he was John McClane's son in Die Hard? Yeah, and then and he then was he also was in Kyle the Divergent Con- series. Oh, right. And he was also in yeah. Suicide Squad. He was also in Terminator as Kyle Reese. Yeah, yeah. I want to see him in something small. He might be good. Might be. So, with all of this in mind, what would you give Terminator Dark Fate out of five? Out of five? Yeah. Um, Man, I had such a good time in the first, like, 30 minutes of this film out of five i'd give it a i'd give it a three i had a really good time and then it went off a cliff unfortunately but you know it's uh it's a what matt is it what matt isn't mentioning is the movie is two hours long (laughs) it's it's a two-hour film folks yeah yeah it, it was really just the first half hour to 40 minutes that i loved and then i really liked the second act and then i just i checked out during the third act because it was just meandering and stupid what is the same thing that we have said every time you come on for a marvel movie or a dc movie the third acts devolve into a cgi fuck fest this movie no different no different yeah, Bla- even black panther the oscar nominated marvel movie devolved into a cgi fuck fest at the end it, it's just yeah. it's it's inevitable it's it's fucking inevitable and that's fine but even the most critically acclaimed of Marvel movies fall right into that trap. I don't think there's any way to get around it. I mean, I'm sure there is. They just know that those movies are successful, so they're not going to stop doing it. This movie can't figure out the... the it, it's, it can't figure out how to solve the equation that Marvel has such a stranglehold on. Yeah, and I've got to say, a movie like uh, Spider-Man uh, Far From Home does a great job of making that CGI fuckfest at the end into something beautiful and compelling to watch. Because sometimes it's a muddy disaster like the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. And you just do not care because you can't tell what's happening. Or, or the, the end, end of, of Black Panther. Y- yeah, the end of Black Panther sucks because it's the evil twin problem where you uh, really can't He's fighting the guy in the at. yellow suit or the rhinos yeah. that were running around. But, you know, that's definitely not one of the problems. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I'm going to give it a two. I mean, it's just... Yeah. I don't love Terminator like a lot of folks do. I mean, I like the first two. I actually... I honest to God, don't remember the first two that much outside Mm. of like the way they make me feel when I think positively about them. But I don't like, I can't tell you a lot of the beats from the first one, like specifically the second one I have more of a memory of, but you know, I mean, I like Schwarzenegger. I like Schwarzenegger a lot. He reminds me of my grandfather a lot. Uh, cause he was, my grandfather was from Eastern Europe too, that Mm. area of the world. So like, and that was something that him and I connected on was Arnold movies. So, Arnold movies have a very special place in my heart, yeah. but it's just this, like, and Arnold's the best part of this movie. Anytime it's, like, him talking about how, like, he has a family and, like, he's just acting normal, funny. Yeah, it's so funny and interesting and, like, I wanted to spend more time with him just, like, Arnold being a Terminator, like, that would be a TV show, like, being a Terminator, the show with Arnold, and it's, he's doing dumb things, like going to the pool and on a diving board, and it breaks when he's standing on it, because he weighs, like, 500 pounds, like, that kind of stuff, in my mind, is, like, I mean, no one's gonna do it, because it's fucking dumb, but, like, that was the fun stuff in this movie, was this weird subversion of your expectations for what a Terminator is. They touched on it in Genesis, as well, and that was the best parts of those movies, and so... You know, it's just 
stop trotting out Arnold, stop trotting out Linda Hamilton, put this franchise to bed for a little while, let it kind of let it kind of build its uh, little bit of protective shell back up and then maybe come back at it again with some fresh legs, some new ideas, some people that are wanting to do something different that take it upon themselves to say, I don't want to just do T2 again. I don't want to just do Terminator again. I don't want to do any of the four through six or three through six movies again. Get that person on this film and let them do something different because these reboot, remake, soft reboot movies, man, I'm... I'm getting so fucking done with them. I really am. Are you excited for the new RoboCop movie? Is that a, that's not a thing, is it? There's a delayed sequel coming out. I'm very excited. Oh shit! Oh, just <laughs> fucking kill me now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. I'm excited for Ghostbusters three though because you know, oh, god. ignoring. Also, by the way, the whole ignoring the other movies thing it works with this because it's a time travel thing. Um, Halloween. Go fuck yourself. Like, you can't you can't do that because not only are you discounting movies that other people worked on and made, um, that's also really conceited to think that somehow you're making the true movie. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Like, just reboot the goddamn series. Don't try to have it both ways. Well, it's a reboot, but it's more of a the true sequel. Like, okay. Yeah, sure. like, look what X-Men did with Days of Future Past. They realized that a bunch of terrible filmmakers have made a bunch of terrible films and the only good one worth preserving was Matthew Vaughn's movie. So they were like, let's uh, use this movie to invalidate them all. And that works because all those other movies still exist. You just got to do another movie that undid the impact they had on the timeline. Right. A bit like uh, like J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movies. A they bit like Terminator to- Genesis. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Terminator Genesis essentially said, oh, um, because of something that happened, the original timeline's invalidated. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. cool. We're changing, we're, we're diverting the timeline here, you know? And, like, that means that the original movies didn't not happen. They still happen. This is just mm-hmm. another timeline. Like, do it, like, if you're going to do this, if you're hell-bent on keeping this in the same universe, do that again. But you already tried it, yeah. and it didn't work, so don't do it, because it already failed. <laughs> so, yeah. sorry. Well, I mean... A Terminator movie needs to be treated with some art and and some skill. And I think you just need cinematographers and directors who are going to come at it with uh, with more than competence. I mean, look James at the Cameron Blade Runner sequel, competent. right? Yeah, that's a beautiful that's a beautiful movie. That's a beautifully is, shot sequel to a movie that has no need to have a sequel. Like no, Terminator I'm, or Blade Runner 2049 realistically has no reason to exist, but I am so thankful and glad that it does because it's an amazing movie. Well, and it's the kind of movie that um, should have been made for about a quarter of its budget because there were some people who wanted to see it. There were not enough people for, <laughs> you know, anyone to think that it was a good idea. Overestimating Terminator is one thing. Overestimating Blade Runner, I want what you that guys are smoking. Stupid. What What are yeah. you? Oh, sure, sure. But like 10 people showed up. Like I went and saw Blade Runner 2049 opening night. Like there was nobody in that theater. <laughs> Brutal. No. Also, it doesn't help that the movie is like three and a half hours long. Like, you've just, not only have you lost the mainstream crowd, you've lost, like, the swing voter mainstream crowd, the people that are like, I could go see it. And that's like, it's three hours. Yeah, I'm not going to see a three-hour movie. Like, that's their mentality. Like, it was, it's almost as bad as it, like, oh, this movie is in a foreign language. I'm out of here. Like, oh, God. Like, it's that yeah, same, it's just, that it's same so thing. It's at that point. Right. So, um, we'll take a break and we'll play a preview for the next Culture Cast.
That's right. On the next Culture Cast, we are going to be talking about Dark City, uh, a, a neo noir noir movie featuring Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, I've never seen it. So, oh, dude, you're in for a treat. It's nuts. I love it. Yeah, it's uh, isn't Alex Proyas right? The guy who directed The Knowing. Yes, and uh, he's done some pretty interesting, like wacky shit. He also did The Knowing um, is not one of them. Oh, that knowing movie is, is awful. Is, knowing is bonkers, man. Um, he also did uh, Gods of Egypt, I think, which oh uh, because God. he's Egyptian, it's uh, allowed. Uh, is that uh, but, is that Coster Waldau, right from Game of Thrones? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's all very bonkers. He likes to connect himself to weird things. I I would believe. Yeah, yeah, and he takes it on a hundred percent, which I have a lot of respect for. Yeah, if you're gonna do something crazy. Give it your all. Yeah, you got to roll that hard six. Yeah, for sure. So until then, until that podcast, where can people find you, Matt? Uh, you can find me on you know the social medias. I'm on uh, I'm on Insta and Twitter and Facebook as at Matt Campania. Um, and I've got a I've got a streaming service where I curate film festival movies called Highball TV. So if you're interested in cool, hard to find film festival movies that went on great film festival runs and then never showed up anywhere else. We're trying to be a platform where we can bring those great movies to audiences around the world. And as far as I'm concerned, that is an admirable task to take upon yourself. Thank you. Because you know what? Like you said, yeah, for every fucking hereditary that comes out um, that gets picked up by, what is it, A24, there are God knows how many movies that don't get picked up that people have yeah, spent man. their fucking hard time and money and effort to make. So, and and huge film festivals like uh, like the Toronto Film Festival, like Sundance. Sometimes there's like three and four hundred movies programmed at these festivals, and so many of these movies do not get distribution deals with uh, you know even the even the smaller local distributors, and then. After that, these are filmmakers who might not ever make another movie if the, film, if the films aren't successful. So we try to be a platform where those filmmakers can make some money and hopefully be encouraged to make their next film. And like I said, that's as pretty fucking admirable as I can muster up. So, Oh, thank you, my friend. I, I, yeah. you're, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker, and I know how hard this struggle is. So I like to uh, try to make it easier for, for other people. Well, and as I mean, I'm not a filmmaker, but as a content creator, anyone going out on a limb for other content creators is a hero in my book. So there you well, go. Thank you. <laughs> um, as for myself, you can find my terrible opinion on things over on this podcast, over at the One Season Show, where we talk about TV shows that only lasted one season, over on the Kolchak tapes, where we talk about Kolchak the Night Stalker, though that podcast has essentially. More or less, we're one or two episodes shy of the end. You can also check out Dreams for Sale about The Twilight Zone 1985 and Chronicles from the Crypt, where I talk about Tales from the Crypt. I am joined by other people on those podcasts, so if I have somehow offended you with my opinion on Terminator, there are other people to dilute my terrible opinion. Uh, Casualty underscore Chris on Twitter is where you can follow me. CultureCast.com is where you can find all of the episodes of this podcast going as far back as I think, I think this is the first Terminator movie we've ever covered. So we didn't do a Genesis podcast. So that's okay. Nobody saw it. <laughs> yeah. Right. That is a fucking fact. Um, <laughs> big thanks as always to underscore 91 for the music for the culture cast. Big thanks to Matt for, I mean, you went out and you spent your hard earned cash. It's expensive to see movies in theaters. Well, it was well worth it. I enjoyed that Linda Hamilton, man. I enjoyed that first 30 minutes. That Linda <laughs> yeah. Hamilton is not even in, by the way. So that's, true. That, that's yeah. a thing. Although, when she shows up, it's epic. It's great. It almost feels like they should have saved it for later in the movie. Well, they needed something later in the movie. That's <laughs> right, sure. yeah. Sure, didn't they? Uh, and yeah, and make sure to check out the next episode. 